Welcome to Code Life. Today we're going to talk about JavaScript date object. So let's say that you have a app that you've created where you're allowing the user to type in a date and then you're going to echo that date back out to them. So I've set up a sample app here to demonstrate this. So we have an input field where we're going to type in say 2019-0101. So we're going to submit January 1st, 2019. We hit submit and it outputs December 31st, 2018. That's not what we expected. So what happened here? Time zones. Time zones is what happened here. We're going to talk about JavaScript data object and time zones. So stick around. So why did we get December 31st instead of January 1st when we printed our date? Here we can see where we've got an input where we're taking in the date as a text string and we'll output it down here as an h4 so when the user clicks the button our on click handler is calling the update javascript function so in our update javascript function we're simply grabbing our to dom object and then we are taking the string that the user typed in passing it to a date object getting that back and then we're in our date object, we're going to print out the to date string and display it back on the screen. So what's happening with line 16 and line 18, where we're getting printing something different than what the user typed in. So to understand what's going on, we need to better understand what is a date object in JavaScript. So for that, let's go take a look at the spec. So here in the spec, we see that a date object contains a number indicating a particular instance in time within a millisecond. I also see that time is measured in milliseconds since January 1st, 1970, UTC. It also says the exact moment of midnight at the beginning of January 1st, 1970, UTC is represented by the value zero. So this is all interesting. These will be clues to help us understand what's going on within our application. So next, let's take a look at the spec and see what happens when we're passing a string into the date object and what does it do with it. Here we see the spec for the constructor for the date object. And so if we look down here, if the type is a string, then let TV be the result of parsing V as a date in the exact same manner as the parse method in section 20.3.3.2. So let's go check that out. So here in this section of date.parse, we can see the function first attempts to parse the format of the string according to the rules called out in date time string format, section 20.3.1.15. So we'll go take a look at that. So that section defines the string format to follow the ISO 8601 extended format. And that format is as follows, year dash month dash day, and then with the time, hours, minutes, seconds, and then a time zone offset at the end. This is interesting. So switching back to our app, we can see that the date we typed in, we just put in a year, month, and day. Our user only provided the year, the month, the day, but we didn't provide a time. So what does the spec say what happens when you don't provide a time? So down here it says all numbers must be base 10, if month or day fields are absent, 0, 1 is used as a value. If hours, minutes, or second fields are absent, 0, 0 is used as a value. The value of an absent SSS field is 0, 0, 0. When the time zone offset is absent, date-only forms are interpreted as UTC time, and the date-time forms are interpreted as local time. So since we did date-only form, it's interpreting it as UTC. So there's another clue to what's going on. Back in our code, let's make a change. One of the things this spec said is that the date object represents a point in time. So it's not just simply a date, but there's a time aspect to it as well. So if we change line 18, so instead of showing to date string, change it to just to string, let's take a look and see what we get. So now when we put in 2019-01-01, we hit submit. Now we get more information. So not only is it December 31st, 2018, but it's 1800 hours Central Standard Time. So where did this 1800 hours come from and this central standard time come from? For this example, it's important to know that my browser is running on a computer that has its time zone set to the US central time zone. JavaScript is using the time zone of the browser to present the time back to me. So as an example, let's change the time zone on the computer and see what happens. So here we can see the computer's time zone is set to central time zone. Let's change that to Eastern. Now go back and let's resubmit our date. That's interesting. 
So we still put in the same date, but the output stream from JavaScript changed. Now it's still December 31st, but it's 1900 hours shown Eastern Standard Time. Clearly, the time zone of the workstation is having an impact on this. Does this mean that when I change the time zone of the workstation, did that change what JavaScript is actually storing in the date object? Let's go modify our code again and see if we can figure that out. So instead of just printing out the date as a string, let's print out the actual value stored within our date object. As you recall, the spec said that the date object stores the milliseconds since January 1st, 1970. There is a method on the date object that will show us the number of milliseconds stored. So let's print that out and take a look. Okay, so now we've put on our January 1st, 2019. We're getting our string out, which is still December 31st, 1800 hours. Now we see the milliseconds count down here. So let's go change our time zone again and see if our milliseconds count changes. So changing this back to Eastern, back here, we submit again. Our date out here changed to 1900 hours Eastern time, but our millisecond count did not change. So that provides us the evidence that what is being stored in our date object doesn't actually change when the time zone of my workstation changes. Since date get time, I'll put the same value even after we change our time zone. The two string is the only thing that changed and not the value of the date object itself. So let's see if the spec says anything about the two string method. So taking a look at the spec, we can see here's the date.prototype.toString. Here we see it says return to date string. So if we go to that, now we see the to date string as a part of step three, let t be local time, and then return the string concatenation of date string t, time string t, and time zone string tv. If we take a look at local time, here we can see the abstract operation local time with argument t converts t from UTC to local time by performing the following steps. We're just taking t plus the local time zone offset. Here we see it's actually the to string that is converting to local time when it prints out the string. We see that the user typed in January 1st, 2019, but this got parsed by the date object as being a UTC time of midnight. And when we went to use to string to present it back out to the user, that UTC date gets converted into the local time based on the time zone of the machine. And since my machine is sitting in US Central time, that is six hours behind behind UTC. So it took January 1st, 2019, subtracted six hours from it. And that's when we got December 31st, 2018, 1800 hours. Now that we understand that the date object, when it parses the string, is parsing as UTC, and the to string is converting that UTC date into local time, and that is where our error is coming from, how can we handle this correctly? When allowing the user to type in a date, we first need to assume the user is going to be typing that date in their local time zone. So we need to make sure that the string we receive from them, we are treating as local and parsing it as local. So there are a couple different ways to handle this. One would be that if we're going to pass a string to the date constructor, we need to understand it's going to get parsed as UTC and then take some sort of action to counter that UTC before presenting it back to the user. One way we can handle that is by adding the time zone offset to the date. So let's see how that would work. So we know the user is typing in a date and it's coming in as a string and here we're going to parse that string. So we know that this date object is going to parse our string as UTC. So we need to add the time zone offset to that date to counter this so that we know that what the user typed in is local and we want to treat it as local. So one way to handle that is we go and take date. We can set the minutes. So we want to add the offset minutes to this date. So we do that by doing date set minutes. We want to get the current minutes and add to it the offset minutes for the time zone. So what this is going to do is fetch the offset minutes, which for central time zone I'm in should be 360 minutes for the six hours that we are behind UTC. Get the current minutes, which is, this is the UTC minute, add those together and set the date to those. In essence, we're adding those offset minutes to this date. So if we save that, we pull our example back up. So now 2019-01-01, we submit. And here we still have January 1st, 2019. And we can see in central time zone. 
So by adding that offset, now when it converts to local, it still stays January 1st as opposed to going to December 31st. If we look at our milliseconds out, we can see that, let's go back and comment this out for a moment, save that, let's go ahead and just default this value so we don't have to keep typing our date over and over. So now when I submit this, so we're back to, so without any offset being added, it's December 31st, and here's our milliseconds. So I wanna grab those milliseconds for a moment. I'll we'll stick those in notepad for the moment. And then we go back to our code. We put in an offset that we're adding, save that. Now we see we've added the offsets, so they're still January 1st. Our milliseconds is different though, so I wanna grab that. And so we can see that those have changed. So let's see how much they have changed by. So if I pull up the calculator, I wanna take the new milliseconds. Paste those, subtract from it. Make a millisecond for every four. Paste that. Divide that by a thousand to get seconds. Divide that by 60 to get minutes. I can see that's 360 minutes. So I can divide that by 60 minutes. So six hours. So we can see that six hours was added to the data object to account for our UTC offset. So that's one solution. Another solution is instead of using the date constructor to pass in a string, we can actually use the date constructor that accepts the components like year, month, day. So as an example, let's go take a look at the spec document. And if we take a look at this constructor, so we can see here under the date constructors, there is a constructor that accepts year, month, day, hours, minutes, seconds, milliseconds. So if we pass in year, month, day, let's see what happens. So to do that, we have to start by parsing our string now so that we have the parts. So we can do date parts equals our string. We're going to split that on our hyphens, which will give us our three parts. Now we're going to create a new date, which equals a new date. And we're going to put in here our year, our month, our day. So now if we save that, so now we go back, we hit submit. Now we get February 1st, 2019. Well, that's not right. So one thing we have to be aware of is when we are using the constructor to pass in year, month, day, the month is zero indexed, not one index. So we need to subtract one because zero is January, two is, zero is January, one is February. So we're gonna subtract one from it. Hit submit. Now we get our January 1st, 2019. So that looks good. So this could be a solution. With this solution though, you have to add a lot more error checking because here I'm making a lot of assumptions when I'm parsing that date on what the format is. Another solution is you can use a library like moment.js. First we will include the moment.js. Here I'm just pulling it from a CDN to include into the project. We don't have to parse it. Here we just simply say our date equals moment. And then we pass in our string. Now, one thing to keep in mind is this is now going to set our date to be a moment object, not a JavaScript date object. There is not a get time method on the moment object. So if we save that, go back over to our page. Now, when we hit submit, we get January 1st, 2019. So it's handled it for us. But how does moment handle it? What solution are they using? If we go look at moment.js and we look at their docs and take a look at parse. One of the things to understand here it tells us ambiguous input without offset is assumed to be local time. So unlike the date object in JavaScript which assumes UTC, moment does the opposite and if it doesn't know or there's no time zone provided, it assumes local. So let's just see how the code executes. So to see how Moment solves this, one, I'm using a non-minified version of Moment.js so that we can easily read the code. And I've gone in and set a breakpoint to where Moment does the actual parsing into a JavaScript data object. It took a little bit to find that line of code because Moment is written to handle a lot more scenarios. So it has a lot more parsing logic and error handling in place. Execute this and then see the code. So when I hit submit, here we can see on line 1154 within the moment.js, 
we're also at the breakpoint of where it finally creates the date object that's going to be used. And here we can see Moment is using the same constructor for the year, month, day as what one of our solutions was. Let me take a look here and see that it's got year 2019, the month is zero, and the date is one. As you can see, there's a couple different ways to solve this. Moment's probably the best because it's going to handle a lot more scenarios than what you thought through. One other gotcha to be aware of when working with dates. If you're allowing a user to free text in the date, and depending on which format they type in, you actually can get different results. Let me demonstrate that. So if we go back to doing a new date where it simply just parses a string, let me save that. Here we can see the format we've been using. So year, month, day with hyphens, if I submit that, we're back to December 31st. But typically, at least in the US, people will type it as month slash day slash year. I type in Smith that way, I get January 1st, 2019. Important to understand that how browsers handle parsing the ISO format of year, month, day is defined in the spec document. So they all behave the same way. But the non-ISO format, example here where we do month slash day slash year is not defined in the spec document. So the browsers can actually handle this differently. Chrome chooses to treat this format as a local date when parsing instead of UTC. It's just something to be aware of that you can get different results depending on how the user types in the format of the date. I hope you found this video to be useful, learned something from it. If so, hit that like button or subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see other content. If you really want to support my channel, make sure and share the content and make others aware of it. That helps out a lot. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.